Game three here is between uh, Lowry and Surprise. Or is this game four? This might be game four. Yeah, even five. Lowry and Surprise. Empire and Dwarves. Got ourselves a bit of an art artillery shootout. One cannon and a flame cannon with some quarrelers backing them up. Longbeard's a great weapon. Slayers, Dwarf Warriors, Minus Blast, Charge on the front line. Thork, Double Thane. And that is that. On the other side, as you can see, the fireworks display coming in. We do have the Sunmaker plus another Hellstrom Rock Battery. Empire Swordsman, Great Swords, Boris Toddbringer, Reichsguard, and then Outriders Grenade Launchers. No caster on the side of the Empire, which I will say it every single time because I always think it is true, but it is just a mistake. There's no reason not to take a caster, so you probably should do it. Even against the Dwarves, they have spell resistance, but I mean, like, it's only 35%. You might as well still take it. Cannon's starting to fire back against the Sunmaker. But the Quarrelers get taken out by the Outriders while paired up with the Sunmaker's damage that's coming in. And the tight Dwarven formation is getting punished really hard by these Rocket Batteries right now. Already we've lost a Cannon, a Miner, and a Quarreler. That is some brutal stuff. As the Dwarves charge forward to try and get into melee combat with the Empire where they might have a bit more of a chance, Flame Cannons are trying to get their medium range into range of the uh, Hellstorm Rocket Batteries and get something done. It's going to be a tough go. Boris lands in these Minus Blasting Charges just to distract them so they don't throw at the Swordsman. Because look at the damage these guys do when they do throw at Swordsman. Okay, never mind. Get a half volley because that just makes me look like an asshole then. That's fine. Whatever. Slayers are trying to run down the Outriders Grenade Launchers. The Dwarves are getting kited. Empire Knights charged into these Minus Blasting Charges. Across the front line, the, the Empire did a really good job of stopping the Blasting Charges from being able to throw. And the Dwarves have just been on the back foot this whole game. They are having a bad time. Rune of Speed gives them a bit more melee attack, so they can punch through that front line a little bit faster. And this Flame Cannon is now in range of the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. They have wandered up into these Swordsmen, but they are determined to fire at the Hellstorm Rocket Battery come hell or high water. Where is the other Outrider Grenade Launcher? There it is in the backfield. They're trying to run down some Slayers. Oh, that's just an Outrider Regular. Okay, okay. That's cool. Boris is in, a, in over a little, uh, in over his head a little bit as Thoric is showing up along with miners and dwarf warriors and such. Another Hellstorm Rock Battery volley trying to get the Quarrelers. Kind of surprised they're not punishing some these dwarven blobs, but I guess the friendly fire might be too great. Outriders grenade launchers do get caught by the Slayers, which is a bit of a whoopsie. They start to path away, and the flame cannon did push off one of the Hellstorm Rock Batteries as these fucking Chads are standing in the Empire front line like, nah, fuck you, I'm busy, and just firing away at the Hellstorm Rocket Battery. I love it. That's my new favorite thing. Thork is fighting back against Boris, and Boris does need to opt out of here, get back into the sky and refresh his charge bonus, or at least just not fight next to... Oh no, next to Slayers. Oh, this is bad, he's gotta go. Boris has gotta go, he's taking big damage. He's gotta run. The Sunmaker is trying to save itself from Slayers, but the Slayers are coming. The other Hellstorm Rock Batteries trying to get back online while Reichsguard are going to rear charge the Slayers. Other Empire Knights are charging these Dwarf Warriors, but the tenacity of the Dwarves is not something to be underestimated. Meanwhile, Quarrelers are back, and they're both shooting at this Outrider that's just trying to get that front line to finally break. Boris is trying to get back in this guy, and it looks like the Dwarves are going to let him, realizing he's much faster. And Outrider's Grenade Launcher is still trying to peel off these Dwarf Warriors. Slayers, only six models left. The Reichsguard are doing their jobs and saving the Imperial artillery pieces. This Hellstorm Rock Battery is back online. Three out of four models still up and alive. We'll see what they can do as the Dwarves are closing in. The frontline fight appears to still be quite contested, but the Dwarves are kind of starting to eke out around the sides and get onto that backfield a little bit more. Boris lands on the Slayers, which is a bold strategy, but I think he's trying to cluster them up for the Hellstorm Rocket Battery that's firing in right about now. We'll see how much that does, though Hellstorm Rock Batteries that aren't the Sunmaker are generally a little underwhelming in my experience. Flame Cannon is still online in all of this chaos, firing away without a crew to speak of. Oh my god, it has 600 HP and it's just sitting in the Imperial front line, fucking firing away. It doesn't give a single shit that Hellstorm Rock Battery is actually about to rout. Oh, from the flame cannon that's just out here like a legend. It's my favorite. It's my it's my favorite thing in the whole world. All right, Outriders on the backfield finally pushed off as Quarrelers are back in fire again, but the Great Swords of the Empire are going to be a problem. They're still very, very healthy, and they're cleaving through dwarves like there's no tomorrow. 
Dwarf Warriors and Miners are trying to reach Orden the fight and rear charge some of these Imperials. And on the back line, Slayers caught the Outriders Grenade Launchers, which is a pretty big loss for the Empire. And they're just taking too much damage. I think the Slayers should be able to finish them off. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The Sunmaker is trying to get back online. It looks like it is, but it only has one volley left, so I guess if it gets that shot off, then big whoop, big diff. But we still have the, the Flame Cannon of Legend. Routes the Hellstorm Rocket Battery again and continues firing. Isn't the Super Dwarf favored? It used to be Turtle Punch in Warhammer 2. In Warhammer 3, uh, the Empire Greatswords have gotten some serious buffs. Outriders Grand Launchers are really strong. And the Dwarves have taken some nerfs here and there. Um, so it, it, it's, it's much more even. It was our Faction War Finals for actually this last Faction War that just came. As the Flame Cannon now turns its ire onto the Sunmaker and lands dead center. The Sunmaker figures its shit out and fires back. Oh, that was so close to being some serious friendly fire. But overall, the Sunmaker crew earns its elite status and hits only dwarves. Getting rid of a dwarf warrior and a miner pretty much off the bat. Dwarves are still about even in bounce power, but they're slipping just behind a little bit. Flame Cannon's still firing away as the Thane takes the fight to, Th to Boris, who has healed up on his own now. I wonder where his heal cap is, but it can't be too far off. Is that, uh, that Sunmaker Vol is going a little more friendly fire direction as the Great Swords and Swordsmen take the brunt of that punishment before it runs away with no ammo and the Dwarf Warriors and Slayers are able to peel off the Reichsguard and Empire Knights. Pretty big wins there for the Empire. And the Flame Cannon still pushes forward. It has four out of four bottles, but the crew is dead on all but one of the bottles. So we have a stealth Flame Cannon rolling through here, and the Reichsguard are going to go right past it because they don't even know it's there because the flag is way over here. They have no idea that the Flame Cannon is just sneaking past them. Go, Flame Cannon, go. <laughs> go, Flame Cannon, go. All right, Boris routed off one of the Thanes. He hits the other one in the face. He's going to get it to route, uh, route any second now. And Thoric is kind of the last strength of the dwarves, but this flame cannon's going out here. As the Outriders Grenade Launchers see it, they see the cannon. No, no, dear God, it's not possible. Oh, they just, they're fine. They're chilling. Uh, that guy's getting dragged along while he fell down. That's fine, but he's back because these dwarf wars are going to peel for him. But that flame can is getting the safety. He is definitely over chasing the Sunmaker. He needs to turn that thing around and fire up this giant clump of Empire State troops. The Slayers get into the fight. Thoric's still in there. And some blasting charges throw at the Imperial State troops. We have other dwarves starting to rally around the map. Flame Cannon, come back! Flame Cannon, they're off the map! They don't matter! Flame Cannon, please! <laughs> turn around! Turn around! Bro, <laughs> shoot at the block. Shoot at the giant blob of state troops, please. Because it, it has, getting shot by artillery is a debuff, but also the flame cannon has burnt, so it has two leadership debuffs that actually could just, like, route this entire thing. It's turning! It's fucking turning! Boris is heel cap, let's go! Flame cannon! Fire! Fire, you stupid fuck! The Outriders fire at it. In the distance, there's the shot. It's a big shot. It routes that swordsman. It maybe routes a great sword. There's the shot. <laughs> Boris is flying at it. No, no, leave it alone. Don't kill it. You fuck. No. They were so beautiful as they route off some more great swords as they maybe route off the swordsmen who are burnt. Boris is trying to, to not Boris, uh, Thoric is trying to hold. He's getting rid of so many things. But Boris did finally finish off the flame cannon that could. All the Empire is routing except for Boris, who is officially heal capped. And these great swords. Are they going to route to Thoric did not bring Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I love Rune of Wrath and Ruin. I think it's undervalued by a lot of people. Here is the Rune of Doom. Causing fear, which might get those great swords to route. But here comes Boris. Can Thoric and the Thane team up on him? Now, we saw how much damage Boris took last time he dueled with Thoric, but Thoric did have Slayers back then. Now he has a Thane, which is actually still pretty spooky. 
is still pretty spooky as we see Boris taking big old chunks out of his health bar. Thane is going to route, unfortunately for him, but Thoric is here, ready to kick some ass, and Boris has lost about 2,000 HP before our eyes. Still taking big damage as Thoric beats his ass into the dirt, and the second Thane is returning to the fight. Maybe going to rear charge his great swords. Boris opts out, but he has no more healing to gain. So all he gets back from this is, of course, his charge bonus. I still think pulling away was the smart decision there. Just saying, it's not like he's getting up in the sky to, to heal or anything. Outriders Grenade Launcher is trying to peel off this Thane, who's doing his best to dodge, while Thoric just sits in the great swords and then fights his way out. Boris is going to land on this poor Thane, who just wants to get back to his lord's side. He takes a big old shot to the face, and a follow-up will kill him. Say goodbye. But Thoric has a bone to pick with you, sir, and the Outriders Grenade Launchers are doing more friendly fire than they are actually damaging Thoric. I think Thoric's best strategy right now is to get back into the middle of his, as many Empire State Troops as he can and let those Outriders just kill him for him. Reich's Guard charge back in, only to go right out. And if they route, they might do the nearby ally as routing debuff that could actually cause a bit of a chain reaction in the Empire here. We lose the Swordsman just like that. Great Swords are thinking about it. This Swordsman thinking about it. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a Rune of Wrath and Ruin right now. Rune of Speed giving Thoric more melee attack. There was not more weapon strength. And he's actually trying to path through the Empire State Troops to get to his Thane. There's no shot you do that. Like... You're not going to get to him. You might as well just kill this stuff before Boris shows up. Because you got to route these guys off so Boris has the 1v1 you. We've seen how poorly that goes for Boris. You don't really want to fight him on top of his own troops. That just seems like a rough time. So close to getting rid of these great swords and swordsmen. But they're holding for now as some of them start to shatter off. Boris is coming back in for another cycle charge. Does Thoric have his rune of negation up? It looks like he does. Or did he just cancel it? What happened there? He was trying to cast something. There he goes. Rune Navigation, plus 40% damage resistance as he fights back. I don't think he's swinging at Boris right now, which now that Boris has landed, you need to kick his ass. So you shouldn't try to path through to get to Boris when he was out of reach, but now that he's here, yeah, hit him. Alright, he's gone. He's gone. Let him go. Kill the Swordsman while he's leaving. Oh, Rune of Wrath and Ruin. You just, you gotta take it. You just gotta take it, you guys. He causes fear now, and the fear causes a lot of things to rout. Greatsword's also going to get going, and all of a sudden, most of the Empire support is gone. Boris is trying to land on Thoric right now. He's doing that dumb thing where flying units sometimes just hover around instead of actually landing, but his Greatswords are getting low. Other Greatswords are rejoining the fight, and Thoric is still grinding it out. As Boris dives in yet again, this time he successfully lands, which means Thoric can actually turn around and kick his ass, maybe. As another great sword routes, a swordsman is going to follow the great swords off the map. No, it doesn't look like it just yet. As Thoric turns, he still hasn't swung at Boris in a while, I don't think. And if he did, he misses. There he gets a shot onto Boris. And now Boris opts out again. Again, let him go. Let him go. Kill the great swords. Kill the great swords. While he's leaving, kill him. So you gotta get rid of that extra support. Now, Thoric actually has as much health as Boris right now. Even though their health bars, Boris looks a little higher. It's because it's a percentage, right? But Thoric, being a dwarf, has higher base HP. Alright, he got through a lot of state troops. Now, Boris is landing again. Again, you have to turn and just fight Boris whenever he lands on you, as much as it sucks. Like, he's faster than you, so you can't really chase him. He gets the pick. Boris got, like, two or three big hits in a row there. Rune of Speed to give Thoric a little bit better stats here. But it's not defensive stats. He's taking a lot of damage from Boris, but now he's starting to give it back. It, it always goes this way. When Boris lands, he does a bunch of stuff. But if Thor gets the swing back, he gets good damage. But Boris is still hitting over and over and over again. That charge bonus doing really big work for him. But Thor is evening it up, man. Thor pulls ahead on HP all of a sudden. And Boris is leaving again. We gotta get rid of some of these state troops somehow. As Thor is plowing through him again. He's waiting for Rune of Doom to come off cooldown. That fear will get rid of some of these guys because he doesn't cause fear on his own. And he really wants that Rune of Negation to come off cooldown again. But Boris is back in, and that charge might just do it as Thoric's HP and leadership are getting too low to sustain him. 1,000 HP left, down to 700 as Boris keeps getting those hits in. Boris himself is down to 600 HP. Thoric's actually ahead on HP. Oh, but Army Losses takes him. I don't think that that was army losses worthy. That was silly. Flame Cannon got great value. 
Thoric got amazing value. The Thanes both paid for themselves. Well, I guess combined, they paid for themselves. Um, Slayers did fine. Cannon got rolled immediately. Dwarf Warriors did fine. Myers of Last and Charges also got kind of rolled. Very good game here from Lowry and Surprise. That was an awesome time. I want to cast that game. I want to cast that game. I don't feel like I can capture the energy, though, so I'll probably just make a note to myself to clip this part of the live stream. Because that was... That was so fun, man. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.